Today we are going to be replacing the cooler in my Alienware Aurora R8. I've had this computer now right here for about six months. The side panel here is removed because I was trying to do some research to figure out how hard it would be to put a liquid cooler. This computer, whenever I got it, had an Intel i5 with a bunch of other low-end hardware. Uh, I've slowly been upgrading it because I got such a good deal on it and pulling some of the stuff I had from mining and putting it into here but the one bottleneck I've had is the i5-8400. So I got the, the i7-9700K because the Alienware uh, command center that comes with the system has one click over clock, you don't have to go into your BIOS, uh, and then you can turn it up and down. So, you know, if I'm doing folding or mining on this machine with CPU, not that that's cost effective anymore, uh, but you know, I can lower the clock down so it doesn't overheat or get hot or degrade the system at all and then whenever I want to game or do rendering in SolidWorks or anything else I can race it up. So this computer shares the same platform as the XPS, I believe the Aurora R9 and I think the Aurora R7 in that the power supply is sitting in a hinged cage and whenever it's closed it gets really close to the CPU. So that's the shortfall of this cage. The way that Alienware counters that is on the low end, they put in their stock Dell cooler. It looks a lot like a standard Intel cooler. Uh, but on the higher end systems, they have their own custom Alienware water cooler. So I'm not a fan of water cooling personally. Uh, it's just a lot more things to fail. And whenever it fails, it fails catastrophically. The chances of that happening are next to zero but a fan and a heat sink are good enough for me. And in addition to the water cooler, we have two Danatrons. We have a K555 and a K666. Uh, so this would be the K555. Uh, again, it's the vertical. It comes pre-applied with uh, thermal paste there and it's a uh, four heat pipe design so and it's an actual copper plate so that's about i want to say 40 percent better at thermal transfer than aluminum and so the block inside the computer is all aluminum uh, there's no copper there so this should do a lot better for that and then it has four nice heat pipes uh, and then they're going to be embedded in the heat sinks here uh, the aluminum fins and then it's got a fan on top uh, it looks like a pretty aggressive blade pitch so it's going to be loud but it's going to move a lot of air for its size and then here are the four tie downs that i had referenced earlier um, and so they're they're spring loaded so you get the right amount of tension so they should automatically stall out whenever you bottom out so you can't over tighten this in theory um, so that's the k555 the other one here is the k666 and again a uh, solid solid chunk of copper I, I mean that right there the reason that these things are each like fifty dollars is because there's so much copper on these uh, so the entire base here is copper with big copper heat pipes you've only got three of them here and they look to be about the same size so in theory this one's probably going to get a little bit better but again it doesn't have as much alum uh, copper so this one may actually cool just as well. I was worried about that. Um, it does have a smaller fan, so I think this is moving 35 CFM, whereas this one's moving closer to 50. Uh, so it should be a little quieter moving more air. Uh, I think, so if we were to put these side by side, um, get a couple of measurements. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, three inches right here, so we're two and seven eighths. And then this one here, we're right about the same. Uh, both of them have PWM, so four four wire. Uh, and it, the the thing about all of these is they all have uh, stock mounting hardware. So the back plate that's already on here, so I don't have to pull the motherboard or anything. Uh, I just remove the current cooler, and then these already have threaded pegs. Uh, same thing with the 666 here. A very unlucky number and then uh, the same thing with the water cooler so this one here with the fan I think we may be we may be right at height so I'm worried that the fans going to cavitate it won't be able to get enough air pulled in because we're going to have a surface right here which would be the power supply cage uh, so this one may be starved it also comes with some brackets here they're adhesive back this is supposed to have the uh, the most flexible tubing here so in a standard alienware uh, if we can zoom in there uh, these you have your your water block here and then you have two pipes coming straight out of it so whenever that's on your board they're going to go away on the alienware you mount the water cooler right at the top of the case right 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 under here 
and so there's pretty little clearance and so you have to be able to go from 90 or from perpendicular or horizontal and then immediately go vertical uh, and so with the braided hoses that a lot of these have I was worried about you know kinking it or potentially putting a lot of stress on the fittings so we went with the EVGA here so we've got the the standard the stock Dell uh, cooler on here right now it's built to handle the i5 uh, 8400 or 9400 as well as the i7 9700 non K because both of those are 65 watt TDP uh, and so we'll pull up uh, the command center we'll see like the second that any load hits this thing once it hits even a little bit of an overclock just instantly it's overheating it's up to 100 and it starts to thermal throttle so we'll we'll run Cinebench we'll look at that and then we'll see what score we get we'll note that and then we'll rerun it with uh, whichever cooler fits the best and then we'll rerun it and see what kind of uh, output we get uh, or output improvement we get so eliminating the thermal throttling and then also to get an idea of how much these actually go above 95 watt uh, I've got an old uh, Belkin. This is basically the equivalent of a kilowatt. Uh, so we can hold this up and we can see what wattage it's actually pulling at the wall. Granted, there's a lot of other stuff in here, but we can see what it's running steady state. And if it's, for example, running at, I don't know, 50 watts, and then this thing goes way above 150 watts, we know that 145 watts, then we know that the cooler is pulling uh, more than 95, so we can get a better idea. And then on their website, they say that they're good for 95, up to 95 watts. And so we'll see. We'll also get a good idea for how loud they are. Uh, I will say this, this case is not quiet. Uh, this has some big beefy fans. They move a ton of air. Uh, and so with those going, this computer is very obnoxious. We'll, hopefully the video can pick that up. Uh, and then we'll hook it up with one of these and then we'll see we can adjust fan speed again in alien with command center it's a pretty handy tool and then we'll see how that goes advanced so here we're going to be at 4.9 and then we will just hit run and we'll see what we get see how small we can make that so it's already off to the races So here we're 90, you can hear the fans pulling up. And it's uncomfortably loud, so now we're like, it's system, it's gradual fan ramp, can't even keep up, we're holding 99C. T-junction max on here is 100C, so we're pretty close to boiling water. Uh, it's thermal throttling bad. Uh, let's go see what our clock speed is right now. Uh, we're down to 4.3, so again, we're not holding that 4.9 like we want. And But we are holding 100%, and now we're at 100% fair, or 100C. Uh, I don't know why it hasn't gone to 100C, or 100% on the fan speed. That's a bit of a question, but we'll be done here with Cinebench pretty soon. We'll see how we do. Our CPU hit 3,254 points. Uh, so let's see what we can do with one of these Danatron coolers. Okay, for starters, we'll pull the tab here. So normally it has a screw that's right here, uh, which you may not be able to see, but that is out. Uh, and so pull that, then we lift this. Put that to the side. So now the CPU is right under here. And so that's where we have the issue uh, that you're running into the three and a half inch limit. So we'll pull both of those, and then we'll raise this. Uh, so being careful not to pull or pinch any wires. So now we'll have that open. Okay, so now next we will go ahead. Oh, there we go. We will loosen all four screws.
way that they came out of here, it feels like the, uh, the screwdriver is slipping in the head, but it's just them breaking loose. And then we'll unplug. There we go. And so there is our stock cooler. So you can see here, it's just a slug of aluminum. You can even see the cast lines there. Uh, very small. And if we hold that up to the Intel stock cooler, the Dell is definitely more substantial than the stock cooler. This being the stock cooler right here, this is the Dell. Um, the fan is better on the Dell for sure. Uh, but they are very, very similar. So Dell has a little bit more material, so it's got some more thermal mass, so it'll handle peaky loads a little bit better than this one. We will use the thermal paste that comes on the, the coolers for starters. Um, but you can see right here from this angle how that cage goes over and you're basically only left with this much height, right? Because that will sit right there. So you're only left with that. So we already have the holes here um, that are pre-installed. So these are threaded inserts. Uh, and then we will put the fan. How do we want the fan? Let's find out. If we were to put it that way, we're gonna be sucking right from there. Uh, if we're blowing up, that's probably the best, but then we may also wanna cool the VRM. That's too close. I, ooh, this is, it's a tough trade-off. This is gonna be practically touching the RAM whenever I get the next stick in. I'm thinking that we're probably gonna to wanna to do this. We'll just rely on that. We'll rely on enough airflow in the case otherwise to be able to cool that. Uh, let's see if we're actually making contact. We'll put a tiny dollop of thermal paste there. And we'll close this and we'll see if the fan squishes that and if it's actually making contact. Pinching any cables here. Okay. Uh, it did make contact, but it didn't get a lot of squeeze out. So once we get that thing sucked down, then we should be fine. Um, and so because this is like, as from at least eyeballing it, identical in dimension to the other heat sink, the other heat sink would almost certainly cavitate with the fact that there isn't enough clearance. Let's see if we can get this moved out of the way. Full power. There we go. Make sure I'm not trying to screw into my board. My word, these are some beastly springs. Okay. Seems like it takes a little bit to get the spring compressed enough and then it bites. And four is tight. Now let's hook this up. And put this, get this festooned around here. Close that then. We'll see if there's any resistance in closing. And nope, it closed just fine. Okay, so now we are into 4.9 gigahertz. Uh, so we should be good there. And let's see if we can get that in shot. Okay, so here you can see solid, we're running 50 ish watts. So let's hit run and see we got 0.2 gigahertz faster. So we'll close that so we can see both. And definitely running, so now we're up to 100C at 100% usage and 100% fan. So it, but we're at 242, 230. So that added, so those extra 0.2 gigahertz added, what, 50 watts? So this is, this is where you really do need a much, much bigger cooler. And to be honest,
honest, I don't think I need, and so now we're, we're holding 4.5. We didn't even get to 4.9, so I would say we're almost at 300 watts now. So granted these fans are probably pulling maybe 15, 20 watts each, uh, but you can still see the delta here. Not sure why it just stepped down. But we got an extra hundred points. 